whirlwind of but emotions. But could it be impacted by and the COVID-19 pandemic? A global pandemic. Pandemic. This last year to be normal. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to cripple to the, the coronavirus, some of which eventually led to a whole new explosion. Due to COVID-19 and social distancing, schools were forced to start online classes. There was a lot of anticipation leading up to the end of year events that won't happen now. John F. Kennedy once said that when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger, and the other represents opportunity. According to our dictionary, a crisis is a time of intense difficulty, trouble, or danger. I don't know what's stranger, the fact that almost every aspect of our lives has gone virtual, or that our homes have become containers. It seems like everything that's normal is disappearing rapidly. I mean, how did we go from stressing over school or work deadlines to now dismal news headlines? From seeing our friends in the halls to only connecting over video calls that makes all of our past worries seem so small. We had a mental image of what our year would look like start to finish and all of a sudden it was splattered with delayed occasions which, after careful considerations, led to crushing cancellations. It's a unique situation that apprehends the joy of the young and the old, the beginnings and ends, it doesn't matter if they're graduation or retirement parties. But after seeing my fair share of online posts of what everyone misses the most, I'd gladly embrace the time and we finally decide that it's no longer okay to spend day after day becoming increasingly saddened by focusing on the things that should have happened. Even though changes are taking place and the world is caught up straight, a common thing to the whole world remains the same. The sun will continue to rise day after day. Just take a look at our epic band. The plow symbolizes hard work and the owl wisdom, but resting behind them is the rising sun shining gloriously. Now, ceremonially, the rising sun is a token of a new era, which basically means it's a visual representation of a change in times, a shift in tides happening right before our eyes. The same sunrise that signifies progress and holds the promise that tomorrow will bring a new day, shining an opportunity, a good reminder for you and me that moving on through the hard times is often better than clinging on to the good times that the trials we experience are meant to be observed rather than absorbed so that we can learn and move forward toward better days through bettering our ways for it's the struggle of former years from which the better things have come to us. You see, if we get too caught up on the fading beauty of the sunsets in our lives, we'll forget that the sun will soon rise, bringing the same beauty but leading to light, to day instead of night. So is it right to blindly subscribe to the idea that the good things have passed us by, these are dangerous times, and that we should act accordingly? No, these are the times that, through all the darkness, we need something to shine. These are the times when we must make up our own. These are the times we remember that with crisis comes opportunity. Because if we put that mentality aside, we'll struggle with the new human need to die inside. Another definition for the word crisis is a time when a difficult or important decision must be made on whether we'll seek opportunity or cling on to what's fading away. So FFA members, as the sun continues to rise like it has and will day after day, I ask not what you would have been doing if it weren't for this whole surprise. No, but rather, what will you do today? Hi mom and dad, I just wanted to call and say thank you. I mean, dad, you were the one who got me started in FFA. You instilled a passion from when I was young and mom, you were there every step of the way to guide me. You know that saying, give them an inch and they'll take it a mile? Well, I like to think that in raising me, you guys gave me a lot more than that. You started me off with a mile and if you multiply that out, I should be able to go at least, well, you can do the math. Leanne, Jacob, what's up? I just wanted to say I've always thought it was pretty cool to be able to share dedication to FFA with both of my siblings. Being the middle child, I was never in anything alone. Throughout my years, I always had one of you at my side and I was able to learn from you each in different ways. I really am thankful that I was able to grow through such an incredible organization with both of you and see the impact it's had on our lives. All right, so here's a big shout out. 
my buddy Garrett, and all the members of the Lax Burlington FFA under the fearless leadership of Mr. Quam, as well as all of the advisors, mentors, and members across the country that I've been fortunate enough to cross paths with up until this point, and I wish I had time to name, uh, our relationships hold so much value to me, and our memories are something I will cherish for a long time. I'll break it down into the simple, honest truth and say that in being involved in an organization that is such a big part of my life, you all have literally made me who I am today. This last call is for the ones who make the wheels of NDFFA spin around. Whether it was the foundation or the association, it's so promising to see the passion in all of you who work behind the scenes and a pleasure to work alongside you this year. Oh, and my team, of course. Christina, Anna, Michaela, Maddie, and Hannah. Six unique journeys through FFA all coming together for one year of service is a pretty special thing. And then, of course, it wouldn't be possible without the selfless dedication shown to us by Aaron and Craig. Guys, thank you for a memorable year.